Welcome back to my bad hair day. <laughs> Hey, and welcome back, or welcome if you are new here. I hope this video is informative to you and helps you and gets you sewing those knits right away. And even if you do have a serger, this video could be helpful for you because you can't do everything on a serger. So, of course I do all my construction on my serger, but I do have to do my top stitching sometimes on this machine, or I do have a cover stitch as well, but before I have my cover stitch, I did have to do top stitching with a double needle. So I have been noticing in Facebook groups that a lot of individuals are asking if they can sew knit fabric on a regular sewing machine, or if they should be investing in a serger. And the short answer to that is, absolutely you can sew anything almost on a regular sewing machine a serger is just an upgraded luxury so I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to know about sewing knits on a sewing machine so you can get sewing today So if you're not really sure what the difference between knit fabrics and woven fabrics are, I'm going to leave a link below to an episode of the Love to Sew podcast where they describe it really, really well. Much better than I could do here in a short amount of time. But I'm just basically going to say knits are typically stretchy fabrics. They are called knits because of the way that they are created with the threads that go together to create the fabric whereas wovens are woven together with a different technique which is what gives the wovens a more stable characteristic and knits more stretchy characteristic and the reason that knits are harder to sew on a sewing machine is because of the way they are constructed and their stretchy nature. The last thing you want is to sew a nice t-shirt, turns out beautifully, stretch it over your head, put it on, and you hear popping and seam ripping. That can definitely happen if you're not using the right stitch on your sewing machine. And I will say too that these are just general guidelines for sewing knits on a sewing machine. Obviously some knits are going to be easier to work with, some machines are going to like knits better or not, and it, there's a lot of variables that come into play. So these are just a totally general rule that can help you troubleshoot if you're having issues. So I can't really decide which is the most important out of these two things so I'm gonna start with them together we're gonna to talk about your stitch and your needle and I'm just gonna quickly go over the needle because it's pretty basic so you want to have in your machine a ballpoint or a jersey needle or a stretch needle and they're all kind of the same thing the needle tip is just different than a universal needle so that it can go through the knits easier and not damage the fabric as you're sewing and this will help to prevent skip stitches and it can help with tension issues as well another needle that can be handy for knits is a double needle and this is just exactly how it sounds it is a little shank with two needles coming down and it is used for top stitching. I wouldn't really recommend it for construction just because it's more of a finishing piece, but it does work great for things like hemming. The only thing that I see a lot of issues about and I myself have issues with is something we call tunneling and this is something that happens dependent on your tension. So you kind of have to play around with your tension to try and minimize that tunneling and it often happens because the bobbin tension is too tight and I'm really hesitant to say that because I don't want you messing with your bobbin tension depending on your machine it might not be an issue if you do have like a if you do have a front bobbin case that's that just pops in from the front they're really easy to adjust there should just be a little set screw on your bobbin case and I will link my bobbin tension video below for you guys. It's an exclusive video so you can only get it from the link but I will link it for you guys. So I did a little bit of comparison here for you guys to show you the differences in universal and ballpoint and really on my machine you can't really notice a huge difference. I was using a brand new needle for both so the universal actually did quite a good job going through this knit fabric. One of the reasons I really love this machine is because it is awesome on knit fabrics. My backup machine doesn't do so well with knit fabrics and I notice a lot of just uneven stitches or puckering, tension issues. It really doesn't love knit fabrics. 
and I hate to say it but I think that's just the difference in quality my backup machine is a hundred dollar Walmart starter machine and this bad boy was not a hundred dollars <laughs> I'll link the video below if you guys want to see what machine I'm working on right now you're gonna want to consult your manual first there will likely be a guide as to what stitches work for which fabrics and if your manual doesn't have that I will put some links down in the description box to some websites that have some good charts but the main thing you want to think about is the stretch so a straight stitch think of when you're sewing on a woven fabric the straight stitch holds it nice and tight and that's exactly what you want in a seam so a woven fabric your seam doesn't pull along the stitch line and with a knit garment it's going to so you want to make sure that your seam is going to stretch with the fabric and not just pop as soon as there's stress on it to prevent the popping we're going to use a stitch that can stretch the one that most machines have and that a lot of people use is just your basic zigzag stitch most machines will have a zigzag function if it's just basic no problem it will work just fine set it to your zigzag stitch and away you go the trouble I find with zigzag stitches and this is a per personal preference when the seams are stretched it looks like there's a bit of a gap there where it zigs and zags that's probably just a personal taste it doesn't really affect the quality of the garment but there are other stitches you can use if you want to try something different my personal favorite is the triple stretch stitch so it basically does three quick little stitches back and forth and then it moves on to your your next stitch and that is how it progresses all the way down your seam so it does take a little longer it uses a little more thread but in my mind it is the strongest and the highest quality just a personal preference I think another stretch stitch your machine might have is a lightning bolt stitch and this is just basically a zigzag kind of tilted on a diagonal a little bit and again it's just gonna do the same thing maybe a step above the zigzag but in my again in my opinion a step below the triple stitch and there's also the overlock stitches that you can play with. I've really not spent a lot of time with these. They do finish off your seams more than just your basic stitches will, if you have the functions on your machine. And I just wanted to take a quick break here and remind you about the giveaway that I am doing with Sew YYC. I will link that video down below, but it is a $50 printing credit to Sew YYC, so you can get your PDF patterns printed on a large scale format you don't have to do any printing at home or taping out of patterns so make sure you check out that link below and enter that giveaway the draw closes at the end of the month here so make sure you get entered make sure you go right now and get entered into that draw you do need to be subscribed so hit that button right now to be ahead of the game so once you've done some practicing and you figured out which stitch you like it's time to sew on your actual garment and the last thing you want to do is get set up with your garment you're all ready to sew this amazing fabric that you have been saving for a long time because you've been too scared to try knits you put it through your machine and your machine eats it and if you have tried to sew knits this may have happened to you the machine will start taking it down into the feed dogs or down into the like where the bobbin is and it is horrifying to see that because sometimes to get out you have to cut it out and it's heart-wrenching so to prevent that there's a couple things you can do number one is just start a little bit in from the edge of your fabric so that the edge of the fabric can't get pulled down with the needle and then you can go and back stitch to the end and forward stitch for some reason this just works better try and not get right to the edge just in case it does want to eat it as time goes on and as you practice with different fabrics and get to know your machine a little better you'll get a better feel for how to prevent that if you're still having troubles with things like tension and it not feeding through properly you can just take a simple piece of paper and stick it right on top of your machine and then put your fabric on top of that and it'll help your fabric slide smoother through the machine so it doesn't get caught or eaten by your machine a piece of tissue paper is great for this you just sew right over exactly how you would normally and then rip your paper off on the back tear away stabilizer or tear away interfacing is another idea that could help with this now if you're going to be sewing a lot of knits I do recommend getting a different presser foot for your machine a lot of people will recommend a walking foot this is great I have a video about my walking foot for my backup machine I will link it below this new machine which I think is exclusive to FAF has a built-in walking foot and it's just a little piece 
on the back that I can engage or disengage, which I typically keep it engaged all the time. But there is another foot that I wanna recommend to you that you might already have and not have to invest in a walking foot and that is the silk or satin stitch foot and it's basically just a little plastic foot and the bottom has teflon or metal type skis on the bottom so that it helps your fabric glide along a lot nicer than really any other foot that I found and on my backup machine my little singer I found that that was actually better than a walking foot on that machine it just seemed to work the best so a walking foot is just going to actually move along the top of your fabric. It works similar to how the feed dogs work on the bottom, but now you have the feed dogs on the bottom and your walking foot on the top and they are both working together to move that fabric along so neither the top nor the bottom gets bunched up. And please don't be overwhelmed when I start talking about things like presser feet. On most machines it's as simple as popping it off and then swapping the new one in lowering your presser foot and clipping it in. So easy. With the walking foot you may need to remove the shank depending on how your machine is. I would say most machines you do have to do that but that's just from my personal experience. I am by no means a sewing machine expert. And one last tip I have for you is to increase your stitch length so that your needle isn't going into as many spaces. It's not a perfect tip or trick but it can help in certain situations the one thing I will caution when you increase your stitch length is to check your tension you may need to readjust you may need to lower your tension because you're now taking in more fabric at a time I find this with almost everything when I increase my stitch length I have to check my tension just to make sure everything is working as it's supposed to and that's it for this video you guys it's super easy to sew knit fabrics on your sewing machine once you know what you're doing and a lot of it again is trial and error but once you're set up with the right equipment you should have minimal problems I will link my presser foot kit down below that I like to recommend they don't fit my new machine but I still do use them on my other machine when the time calls for it and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you hit that subscribe button, number one, so that you don't miss out on the next giveaway because it's going to be a big one, but also because I don't want you to miss out on any future videos that are going to help you in your sewing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!